Guns and drugs into the jail after a gun was found on the grounds. Acadia Parish Sheriff KP Gibson says it's a big problem. News 10's Brent LaFosso telling us how they're now battling this growing crime. With nearly 200 inmates housed here at the Acadia Parish Jail, you can imagine that deputies often find inmates trying to smuggle in guns or drugs. Well, now inmates are going to have a much harder time trying to get contraband inside. What really brought it to our attention is that we did have an individual we searched one night, um, had a gun in, a, in, in an area where it wasn't found during a, during a search prior to coming in. Pat down in a pat down search. And, and it was very, you know, very scary for our personnel and anybody that was in the building um, when the search, you know, when they found the gun and so forth from there. So. Acadia Parish Sheriff KP Gibson says one of their biggest challenges is stopping weapons and drugs from being brought into the jail. If in a perfect world, yeah, we catch everything that comes in. He says when inmates are brought in, they're also pat down and strip searched, but some things can go unnoticed. In that aspect, you still don't have the full effect that, you know, if something's placed in a very, you know, obscured place, um, that you, you're going to find it. That's where they hope this new full body scanner will help when inmates get creative. You know, people sometimes will take balloons and put drugs into it and swallow it and pass it a few days later and then they have narcotics inside the jail. So our goal is that with, the, with this new scan unit that we can make sure at least trying to do is the best of our ability to catch anything that's maybe within the cavity or on the person from there before they're even before they're even booked into our jail. He says a scanner will help corrections officers find any dangerous weapons or drugs, especially fentanyl, and stop them from being smuggled into the jail. So it's safety is really the biggest thing for everybody, inmates including our people, but um, I don't think you can put a price tag on that. The sheriff tells me that the full body scanner is not 100 proof, but it's a massive leap in the right direction and keeping contraband out of the jail. Reporting in Acadia Parish, Brett LaFosso, KLFY News 10. Sheriff Gibson says corrections officers will also be randomly checked using the full body scanner. New information for you on a St. Landry Parish case we have been following. Jamarcus McClendon has been sentenced for two counts of first degree murder. McClendon will serve two life sentences for the deaths of Nikita Ram Raymer and Sean Parish in 2016. The two life sentences will be served consecutive consecutively without parole, probation, or suspension of sentence. Then a judge sentenced Clarence Payton to 40 years in prison for the shooting death of Rebecca Hayes. In May of 2020, Hayes was leaving her shift at Church's Fried Chicken in New Iberia when she was shot and killed. According to the DA, Blayton was found hiding under a vehicle. The victim's purse, phone, the murder weapon, and bloodstained clothing was found at a nearby house. He says Blayton will also serve 10 years at hard labor without benefit of probation or parole for armed robbery. Then controversy over the alleged service dog dispute on the UL campus. As News 10's first reported, a former student dropped out of school because she was denied access to use what she says is her service dog, Cookie, following an alleged incident with a professor there. Now, as News 10's Rodrigo Taylor reports, one family is speaking out after they say their service dog was attacked by Cookie on campus. Bryce Hancock, a former UL student, recalls the attack on his dog Elsa from Cookie as if it was yesterday. He says the attack happened in November, but wants people to know the truth about Cookie. Just walking down the same routine, my same pathway, I know where this giant dog comes out and just straight up attack her. Hancock says Cookie injured Elsa, causing her to go to the vet. Cookie couldn't tell, is, she, is this dog coming at me because he or she wants to play? or because they're trying to be aggressive um, and Cookie bit the other dog. With my son jumping into action to remove Cookie off of Elsa, it could have been worse. Fortunately, he did not get bit and I'm thankful for that. We took her to multiple trainers afterwards um, to get her evaluated to show that it has no signs of aggression, that that was just simply a just fearful because she was intimidated by the yeah. approaching of the other dog. Peggy Fry says she and Alexander Dondeville, the owner of Cookie, exchanged emails. She told me that her dog, Cookie, had been attacked by other dogs before. 
And I'm sorry to hear that, but that does not give a right for her dog to attack anybody. This is like two attacks in less than four months. First on a service dog, a full grown service dog, Elsa, and then on a professor. Fry and Hancock says they are concerned for the safety of other animals and people. You don't want nobody coming around and it could be another attack and it's going to be much major. I would not put anybody in harm's way. And if Cookie is allowed back on campus, which is it's either here or there, I don't have that right to say, I think she would be putting other individuals in harm's way. The university's policy states if improper behavior happens more than once, then the handler may be prohibited from bringing the animal onto university property. In Lafayette, Rodrika Taylor, KLFY News 10. The senior communications representative at UL says if a service or emotional support animal is prohibited from campus, the university encourages students to contact the Office of Disability Services to find out about an alternative reasonable accommodation. An Iberia Parish Sheriff, De Sheriff Deputy helped save the life of a man in need of help. News 10 Zazen D'Amico bringing us the story and how this man wants to show gratitude for the deputy for help saving him and helping him to be able to see another day. This is a story you will see only on 10. Then I had a flushed feeling people should pay attention to things from my hip to my foot. Hot, hot, hot. And then I realized something was obviously very wrong and then realized it was not the car. Dewey says he pulled over to the side in a panic. Then he saw an Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office patrol unit and flagged the deputy down for help. Captain Randall Delcom stopped and he was courteous, kind, and got on his microphone right away. And I had EMTs there in no time, plus a, even a city unit. In just over an hour, Dewey was able to be transported to Lord's Stroke Center in Lafayette to be treated for his emergency. He says the doctors credited the quick timing of his arrival for the reason he was able to recover so fast. By the second day, I think it was, maybe the third, I was finally able to move my leg, my toes, and so on because they said I had gotten there fast enough. Since the incident, Dewey wants to show his appreciation for what Deputy Delcom and the rest of the sheriff's office does for people in need like him. He shouldn't have been there, but he was. So I can truthfully say, much as they give trouble about police officers, no, don't do that. You're not exactly going to call Ghostbusters when you got a problem. Iberia Parish Sheriff Tommy Romero released a statement regarding Deputy Dalcom's heroic acts. He said, quote, I want to personally thank Mr. Dewey for his recognition of Deputy Randall Dalcom. It is always nice to be acknowledged for a job well done. And deputies with the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office are continuously trained to render aid and assistance when needed. End quote. Trevor Sonia over in the Weather Center and we have um, a parade taking place today. Of course, and so we want the weather to be nice for us, Trevor. Yeah, well, it looks like we'll see a lot of clouds, cold temperatures, and maybe some rain showers through the day. So maybe today won't be the best weather-wise, but tomorrow definitely <laughs> looks better. So we have that to look forward to. Let's take a look at uh, our temperatures this morning. 49 Lafayette, 49 in New Iberia, 43 in Lake Charles, 42 in DeRitter. So we do have co a colder air mass that's currently across western portions of the state, and this will be moving in later on during the morning. So temperatures could actually drop a few degrees from here. We could be somewhere in the mid 40s through mid morning and hover there, potentially getting back to the upper 40s. But I really doubt we hit 50 degrees for today unless we manage to see some sunshine. But I think that's doubtful at this point. We do have these uh, showers that are right on the leading edge of this front as well. These will be moving in, so we could see some light to moderate showers through the morning. And then once the low works to the east of us, we get some showers wrapping around on the back side. So I'm going with about a 40 to 50% chance for showers in the forecast through the day today with this low pressure right overhead. So at the very least, we'll keep the clouds around and we'll keep the showers around and a northwesterly flow coming in on the backside of this will give us a breeze through the day. 
So temperatures not rising much again, maybe even dropping a few degrees later on this afternoon and somewhere in the mid 40s. So it will be a cold day for today. Future radar shows us rain continuing to work eastward through mid morning. Notice how we see more precipitation wrapping around this low pressure later on through late morning and through the early afternoon. We may finally get a break later on tonight with skies trying to clear out. But until then, it definitely looks like one of those dreary forecasts. Temperatures in the 40s now and pretty much hovering there through the afternoon. We're cold for tonight, getting into the mid 30s by tomorrow morning. But with sunshine, we're warming up quickly for tomorrow afternoon, getting back into the lower 60s. Northwesterly wind strong today, 10 to 20 miles per hour. And these winds stay strong through tonight as this upper level low works across the area. But we clear out very quickly because we quickly uh, resume a southwesterly flow on the back side of this for tomorrow and Monday. That also leads to a quick warming trend. And then we have our next system. This shows up for Tuesday, giving us our next storm chance for Valentine's Day. So the Baron Crow Parade this morning. We're talking mid 40s, cloudy, windy, wind chills could be in the upper 30s to lower 40s, and showers will be possible. So make sure you have that poncho or that umbrella handy for tomorrow. 57, your temperature right at parade time, sunny and definitely milder. So 49, your high today, cloudy and cold, rain likely, northwesterly winds, 10 to 20 miles per hour, overall rain chance and coverage through the day at about 50%. Seven day forecast shows nicer weather for tomorrow and for Monday. More storms coming in Tuesday, unfortunately, for Valentine's Day. And the pattern remains unsettled through Wednesday and Thursday of next week. And then maybe another bout of colder air by next Friday. All right, thank you very much for that, Trevor. For more information on the stories you see today and also your weather forecast, remember, <laughs> you can log on to our website. That's calefy.com.